Welcome to Antarctica, one of the coldest and emptiest places on Earth. There are no permanent residents here, but there are plenty of penguins and sea life along the coast. A giant ice sheet covers 98% of the continent and is the largest single mass of ice on our planet. The views are magnificent. For miles, you can see ice shelves and beautiful mountain ranges. The climate is unforgiving, though. The average high at the South Pole is 57 degrees below zero. Only a small number of people dare to endure these conditions, and more than a few are Ohioans, who are here to take advantage of the awe-inspiring landscape the continent provides for scientific research and adventure. I made my way to the last unexplored frontier, Antarctica, to observe what life is like on the continent and see how Ohioans are contributing to America's scientific endeavors. It's a long flight to the bottom of the Earth. My journey started by flying more than 8,500 miles from Columbus, Ohio, all the way to Christchurch, New Zealand. Christchurch is a hub for the United States Antarctic program and is a gateway city to the ice. Once there, the U.S. government fit me with special clothing to ensure I was prepared for the environment. Two orange bags contain the clothes that could save my life. I had to try on everything to make sure it fit. Long underwear, sweatpants, thermal socks, heavy-duty gloves, goggles, parka, ski pants, boots, and of course, the balaclava. My next step will be to board the U.S. Air Force C-17 jet, equipped to land on the ice in Antarctica. The military plane will take me to McMurdo Station on the coast of the continent to observe the research Ohioans are undertaking. The flight from Christchurch to Antarctica takes about five hours on the C-17. There were more than 50 people aboard my flight, ranging from journalists to military from Australia and New Zealand to researchers and contractors. My anticipation is running high at this point because it's only a matter of time before I'll be stepping off this plane onto the white wilderness of Antarctica. Getting off the plane, I'm blinded by the brightness. The one color that comes to mind in Antarctica is white. White as far as you can see, especially on cloudy days with light snow coming down, filtering out the sunshine and keeping the blue sky at bay. A bus takes us 16 miles to McMurdo Station. All personnel and cargo going to or coming from the South Pole Station or other field camps on the continent must go through McMurdo first. The main labs are housed here where scientists, including Ohioans, are making new discoveries each season. McMurdo Station, established in 1956, is located on the southern tip of the Ross Island, about as far south as you can travel by ship during the right time of year. It was here that one of the first Antarctic explorers set up camp. This is where Robert Falcon Scott was able to get with his wooden ships in 1901 and 1902. When he came back in 1911 and 12 to make his push for the South Pole, he wasn't actually able to sail this far south, and that's why his main hut is up the coast about 20 miles at Cape Evans. Scott's hut still stands today. After 1917, it remained untouched until 1956, when U.S. expeditioners dug it out of the snow and ice. The hut was found in remarkably good shape and a state of preservation. It also included many artifacts from earlier expeditions. This is clothing that some of the original explorers wore back in 1902 and during subsequent expeditions. You have hats, there are boots, even some gloves here. This was considered state-of-the-art back during those times. In 1956, nations with resources and interest in Antarctica came together to start exploring the continent. This laid the groundwork for future exploration and scientific research. The U.S. government set up a, a, an establishment here to be able to help support that and with the idea in mind that we probably would want as a country to have a program down here for some period of time. At that time, development of a remote outpost was a specialty of the U.S. military. The Navy was tasked to establish a site in Antarctica. They remained active there until the early 1990s. Today, a lot has changed since the government's initial efforts. In the middle 50s, uh, there were perhaps 200 people here, and of course they were all male. Uh, now we have well over 100 buildings. Some of them actually still date back to the, the 60s. We have a workforce of roughly 1,000 people in the summer that are here, and uh, at least 35, maybe even as much as 40% are women. And, and that's at all levels, from bulldozer operators to research scientists. 
McMurdo Station is now the largest community in Antarctica and serves as an advanced logistics hub for the U.S. program. Without its scientific research, penetrating the continent's interior would be near impossible. Many Ohioans conduct research on the continent. Their studies have come a long way since they first started traveling to Antarctica. Their findings could ultimately make a major impact across the globe. We hope that the work that we're doing here lays the foundation, the groundwork, for answering uh, more complex and more detailed questions later on. Questions OSU professor Barry Lyons has spent more than 30 years gathering data to answer. He works with his team inside the Crary Lab at McMurdo Station to analyze the latest water samples they've collected. The team tests pH and other details before cleaning the containers ready for a fresh set of samples, a task that takes the teams into one of the last untouched frontiers on Earth. This is one of the dry valleys here in Antarctica, and as the name goes, yeah, there is no snow down here. It's just bare dirt right now. This does qualify as one of the coldest deserts in the world, receiving just a few inches of snow each year. Researchers are trying to determine how life in this water, blue-green algae and other microorganisms, have evolved over millions of years. Dedicated grad students actually live at this remote camp for months at a time. Their tents sit right next to the glacial streams where they collect the samples. Supplies remain boxed up and weighted down surrounding the camp. The team strives for as little human impact in the valley as possible. Researchers go to huge lengths to ensure that they don't contaminate the environment, and that even means yeah, human waste in buckets here. They separate it out too. What happens here is, might be the beginning of what's, what's gonna happen globally. Ohio State University's Dr. Barry Lyons and his team make up just one part of the long-term ecological research project. Here in the Dry Valleys, more than 10 different disciplines are studied. Biologists interested in the tiniest organisms in soil called uh, nematodes to uh, glaciologists who are interested in how glaciers move at timescales of uh, decades and centuries. All these scientists share their experiments, studies, and ultimately their findings to piece together answers from a complex scientific puzzle affecting multiple disciplines. The environment is so dynamic that we can't understand how one aspect of the environment or ecosystem changes without knowing the big picture. And that big picture means looking at how changes here impact everyone on the globe. Research thousands of miles away and ultimately the answers that follow could change our habits here at home in Ohio. There are our close teleconnections and interrelationships between the changes that are going on um, in Ohio in Ohio and what's going on around the world. So we're, we're, we're trying to understand how they're all connected and how they relate on a larger scale to the planet as a whole. But it all has to start somewhere. And that place with university professors in the lab and eager assistants in the field is Antarctica. The research doesn't stop on the ice. Later, we'll go inside the Bird Polar Research Center on the Ohio State University campus to learn their role in investigating cooler climates. Plus, all the aircraft that fly from uh, McMurdo, uh, my, my folks have uh, full hands-on from the moment it land, hits the ground uh, to the moment uh, that it leaves uh, the station. Men and women behind the scenes meet the Ohioans who oversee everything here, both in the air and on the runway. And we're cooking it up in Antarctica, what it takes to feed more than a thousand people in the middle of nowhere. But first, ST Knopf from Twitter asks, who was McMurdo Station named after? McMurdo Station is named for the McMurdo Sound in the Ross Sea. That was named for Lieutenant Archibald McMurdo of the HMS Terror. That boat charted the area in 1841 under command of British explorer James Clark Ross. Another Twitter follower, CSL Washington, asks, what is the giant telescope at the South Pole used for? Astronomers use the tool to explore dark energy. It's a concept that might be causing the universe to expand at an accelerated rate. 